so I wanted to make this quick video because I get messaged quite a lot by people wondering whether they are cut out to make it in the science field. People wondering whether they can still make it as a marine biologist, if they are not very good at chemistry, or if they're not very good at maths, or if they got really bad grades for particular subjects. So I wanted to kind of give like a wrap up of my response to these kind of questions as well as going through what grades I got and how I still managed to make it into my career as a marine biologist, which I have now. So I guess to sum it up um, in a word, uh, no, you don't have to be mega smart and you don't have to get super high grades in all of your subjects to make it in the science field or to make it as a marine biologist. I certainly did not get high grades throughout all of my schooling before going on to my PhD. In high school I did pretty well, so I went to high school in the UK and for context, because I know some people may be listening from other countries, high school is up to age of 16, unless you go to a sixth form, which I didn't, so up to 16. My grades uh, were pretty good, I mostly got A's in my GCSEs, which are the final exams that we take. I think I got a B in maths and English literature, if I remember correctly, and then the rest was A's. So I did pretty well most of high school. After that I went to college, which um, for me in the UK was age 16 to 18, and at college we do what is called AS and then A levels. In my first year I did biology, chemistry, physics and maths. I dropped physics after the first year because it was just too much doing all of those together for me personally. Some people do more than four, I couldn't handle all of those four. And then that's where I went super, super, super downhill. I did really, really shit. Honestly, I was dealing with uh, various different personal issues in my life at the time and my grades suffered. I think I came out with two C's and a D. I think the D was in maths and then I got a C in biology and a C in chemistry. Considering how well I did in high school and what I was expected to get and the grades that I needed to get to then go on to university to study some kind of wildlife science, which is what I'd always wanted to do. Those grades were shit and I was absolutely heartbroken. Um, it was really unlike me to do that badly. So what I decided to do was I took a year off, uh, a gap year, and then I did a bunch of volunteering, did a bunch of different work experience placements at different places just to kind of refigure out what it is that I wanted to do and how to move on in my career without the grades that I needed to get onto the courses that I wanted to do. So what I decided to do ultimately was go and do a foundation degree before I started my bachelor's. This was an extra two years that I would start with and then I would be able to join a bachelor's degree sort of halfway through. That's what I ended up doing and then once I got onto that degree, once I got to university, I managed to do really well and I managed to pull myself back together and got pretty decent grades coming out of my bachelor's. I was never top top of the class but I did a lot better than what I did in college and then I managed to get straight onto my PhD from my bachelor's with honors. I definitely have not always got excellent grades. I'm not one of those people that this stuff just comes easy to. I've definitely met a lot of people like that. I remember there's a girl in my physics class and she was so, so smart and it seemed that she had to put no effort in. Like it seemed like it was just so easy for her. Everything just came to her so naturally. And she actually went on to go to Oxford University, I think. But I was absolutely not one of those people. I've always had to really, really work hard to try to get good grades. I've never really been a person that's been good at exams. Um, that kind of atmosphere, I guess, just isn't one that I particularly thrive in. So yeah, I did find it really hard, but I still managed to push my way through. And then I ended up being able to get onto a PhD program and get the career that I have. Honestly, really don't worry about grades. I know in the moment when you are doing your degree, your end grade, your final grade seems like the most important thing in the world to you. Or when you're at high school, the grade that you get from each subject seems like the most important thing in the world to you. But please try and remember that the grade attached to your high school diploma or even your bachelor's degree that isn't the outcome of your degree. That's not the outcome of your high school experience. The outcome is you. It is not all defined by that one grade. And I know in the moment it really feels like that, like I've, I've been there and I felt exactly the same, but it's only really when you get to the other side that you realize how important all the other stuff that you've learned and all the other changes that have happened during that high school experience or during your college experience that actually makes you employable and makes you you know, the kind of candidate that would make an excellent scientist. During the high school experience and during your college or your university degree, 
you grow so much as a person you learn to be curious you learn how to apply that curiosity to real world problems and you learn how to ask scientific questions and you develop problem solving skills you learn how to work with other people which is a really really important skill to have in the real world there are so many skills that you come out of these experience with which are not reflected in the, your final grade and i promise you that employers and professors looking to hire you for a potential phd candidacy all these qualities they look at they don't just look at a grade if it was that easy just to get an excellent grade and then you're fine yeah for the rest of your career there'd be a lot more hyper successful people it really does not just come down to getting an excellent grade to making it in a field what is most important i think is having the passion for a particular subject and showing your ability to work really hard as long as you try your best as long as you are doing what your best is and everybody's best is different my best is different than your best and it's different than your best friend's best knowing that you have done the best that you personally can possibly do is all that you really really need to strive for during your high school or your university experience try your best and then work with whatever grades you come out with and then coming to doing well in specific subjects as i said i've never been particularly good at maths and in biology in the science world yes maths is really important uh, you have to apply statistical tests to absolutely everything that you do or it really means nothing so maths is actually used a lot in biology in marine biology but you don't have to be some like superstar maths student to be able to make it as a marine biologist i am certainly not but once you get into the actual science field once you actually get into the workplace into the research environment there are a lot of resources available to you to be able to help you overcome the things that you're not um, particularly skilled at or you know the areas which your skills aren't the strongest so when i come up against something where a really high level of statistical skills are required i will ask somebody that has those skills to help me or i will seek out the resources for those skills so you have access to resources to help you with the things that you can't just recall off the top of your head or there are other people around you to help you this is a big reason why being able to work with other people work well in group settings is really important because you rely on your colleagues you rely on your peers to be able to help you with your problems just as much as they rely on you to help them when it comes to their problems so being able to work with other people in research environments is really really important because different people will have certain skills in different areas and that's what makes a great research team having different people which are particularly skilled in different types of areas nobody is expected to know absolutely everything so don't worry if for example you are not particularly good at chemistry or maths and you're trying to make it as a marine biologist as long as you have passion and you are willing to work really really hard you will be able to make it in the research world and also there are lots of different areas where certain skills that are you know outside of maths biology chemistry are really really valued so skills more related to social science so your ability to talk and connect with different types of people there are plenty of areas in marine science where these skills are really 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 valuable and you would be surprised at the amount of people that are excellent at all the stem subjects but really aren't very good at dealing with people and um, different communities and being able to actually voice their passions and their research to non-scientists or non-academics so your skills or your interests may not lie in the hard stem subjects but that absolutely does not mean that you cannot make it or that you cannot have a career in the marine realm things like photography for example you could use those photography skills to become a wildlife photographer or a wildlife journalist and promote ocean advocacy that way if for example you really enjoy engaging communities and you really are good at talking with different people there are tons of ngos out there that really really value those skills that would really benefit from someone like you to help run their local conservation projects perhaps you're just really good at using social media <laughs> most research stations out there and ngos hire social media managers to promote the work that they do so perhaps that's something that you're really good at and 
those sorts of things don't require experience or hard, you know high grades in the hard STEM subjects. So wherever your skills lie, whether that's in the hard sciences, some of the hard sciences or something completely different, there will always be an area within ocean conservation that will benefit from you being in it. So just to sum up, I wanna say, don't let having bad grades in the science subjects put you off from a career in ocean conservation. Whether or not you do want to have a career in research as a marine biologist, or whether you want to steer completely away from that and work for a government or an NGO or any kind of conservation organization, Whatever skills that you have, whether they're in the sciences or not, whether your grades are good or not, as long as you have the passion and you're willing to work hard, there is a place for you and you are absolutely needed. Please, please keep going and don't give up at the early stages, particularly if you're just in high school or you're just going through your bachelor's degree thinking that you're not good enough because those feelings really truly never go away. I recently had a conversation with my current supervisor about this, still having feelings that I'm not quite good enough. That's actually called imposter syndrome and that is perhaps a topic for another video. I hope this has been helpful if you are someone watching who has perhaps had doubts about whether you're gonna make it in this industry because you have maybe had grades which you're not particularly happy with. Please feel free to ask me any questions that you have in the comments and I will see you again in the next video. Bye.